quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so me and my daughter, we came together and we created this coloring book and it's called A Girl Like Us. Um, it's a coloring book. We have journals. Um, it will probably end up being a movement. Uh, she taught herself uh, how to be a digital artist during COVID. That was one of the things that, that she learned. My daughter deals with um, a condition called brachial plexus. Um, it's a birth injury. Uh, some nerves were stretched when she was born. And Yes, that's the question. Where do we go from here, right? Where do we go in life? So ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause for our Cora Sim. (laughs) First off, thank you for being here. And I want to tell the listeners a little bit about what I saw and why I wanted to bring you on. And then I'll have you kind of tell a little bit of yourself as well. So I was scrolling on social media and I saw you on one of my friends, one of my good friends, um, post and you had a notebook sort of thing, a journal. And to me, it just evoked happiness when I saw it, right? Because I saw something that in my eyes, a young girl could see, a young boy could see, and it would make them smile because we don't see too many representations of ourselves on books and movies and art. Yes. And, and sometimes they think that's not for me. No, it could yeah. be for you too. So that's what drew me to you. And that's what made me want to reach out and say, hey, I need you on my podcast because the <laughs> viewers and the listeners need to hear your story. Because my ideal thing, what I think about is some young person sitting at the dinner table and they're like drawing, but they don't know a resource. They don't know that yeah. they could turn their drawings or their poetry into something productive. So that's what brought me on here. But enough about me. Please tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what inspired you. So I, my name is Cora Sims, and I go by Core Creative. So my studio name is Core Creative Studio. I'm also an author. Uh, my pen name is D. Rochelle. Uh, I'm a poet. Um, I'm also a, a graphic designer. I'm a freelance graphic designer. And that's where uh, we get into the journal making. And and I do so many other things. I do logo creation. Um, you give me an idea and I can turn it into something wonderful. Um, it's, it's so funny that you talk about um, inspiring young people because uh, I'm really trying to do that in my uh, secular job. I am a success coach and I work with young adults that are getting out of high school. So they range between like the years of 18 to 24 years old. And one of the questions that we ask them uh, during our application process for our program is uh, when you were little, what did you dream? Uh, what did you dream of becoming? What did you dream of doing? What what did you think, where did you think you would be? Almost always our students struggle with that question. Uh, we even had one young lady tell us, she thought about it for a minute and then she was like, I was just trying to survive. And that just really, it grabbed me and it made me sad. And it's something that I still talk about. I talked to my boss about it and because it bothered me. Because when I was a little girl, I lived in a, a little bit of a hard household, but I was able to dream. Uh, that's where I developed my love for writing. It was an escape for me, um, just being creative. Uh, I, I just knew I was going to be a fashion designer, so I would I would draw little designs and, and little women. Uh, my brother was an artist. So we had somewhere to go, somewhere to escape to. And with creating these journals, that's really what it's about. Um, the cover itself is designed, and there's so many of them. I just I kind of go crazy with the designs, but it's designed so that you can see yourself, um, so that you can see something that grabs you, something that you like. Um, but inside, it's a blank page so that you can create and you can um, just let everything inside just kind of filter out on the page. Um, So that is what it's it's designed to grab and to inspire uh, your creativity because we all need that. 
That is so amazing because when you were talking about the escape thing and you said it hit you when, you know, you asked her, what, what are your dreams? And she's just trying uh -huh. to survive. It is such a thing that most people don't see for the culture, the young yeah. people who they feel like, imagine how we felt in a pandemic, for an example, of when we didn't get to go to work or have things, our world was shaken. Imagine how these young kids and their mental health and what they're going through. Yes. And like you were saying, books and art is an escape for you. Uh -huh. Do you have sort of like a creative writing strategy? If there's some young lady, some young guy out there listening who, who's probably thinking, I love writing comic books. Or so, Is there a guide or, uh, you know, a process that you kind of go through to uh, take you through that? Not necessarily a guide. Um, my mantra, so to speak, is just write. Just start writing. Just pick up a notebook. It doesn't even have to be one of my decorative notebooks. <laughs> just start writing. Um, what I found is even dealing with things that I go through, dealing with anxiety or any stress, little or big, um, once I started writing, uh, I also started painting. That was one thing that I did during um, during COVID. I started painting. Um, those things help you to cope with the. It's it's almost it's the craziest thing in the world unless you do it. But you are literally zoned out, and you're in this process of just making something, and you don't have to think about anything else, mm -hmm. and. We tend to see that with people that take drugs um, or rely on alcohol because they want to be like out. They just want to be out of it. They just want to be somewhere else. And drawing, creating, writing, those things help you to zone out and help you to calm down and lower any anxiety and stress. And so um, my process is just to do it. For many, many years, I was a, a procrastinator. Um, I would talk to him. my father's passed away in 2017, but um, we would talk all the time about me writing because I I've been writing since I was seven years old. And I would say, you know, I think I am going to write a book and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. <laughs> and then finally, it just took me having to just do it. Um, there's different things that inspire different people to write. Uh, to be artistic, to be motivated, to do other things. Sometimes that, that motivation has to be yourself, especially when you don't have those things around you. But for me, it happened to be um, a person uh, motivated me and inspired me to, to pick up and start writing. But whatever that is for you, because everybody's different, uh, just do it. The minute you think about it and... Um, I actually have a workshop I'm going to be doing uh, with the school, with the college here in um, the springtime, and it's going to take us through the process. And I've talked to people um, several times, and the number one thing they say is they don't have time. Well, we have time to Netflix and chill. We have time to eat. We have time to go to the movies. We have time to be on Facebook. And all it takes is just a few minutes a day to just start writing it down. And people have the misconception that writing, expressing feelings or, or any of those things by pen, that it takes a long time and it just doesn't. It really doesn't. If you allot it five, 10 minutes a day, that's more than enough time. Yeah, it's to the point where, as you kept saying this, and I was like, this is something that I always talk about. And I always tell my listeners and they will know, I say, just take the first step, even yep. if you get it wrong. Just, you know, because I have people message me like, hey, I want to get into podcasting. Let's do it. And how do I, I say, just press record. Your first episode is going to suck. It's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> get ready for it. You know, right. and, you know, it, it, it's that, Um, what do I say? Oh, uh, paralysis by analysis. Yes. We <laughs> overthink it so much yes. that we hold ourselves yes. back and I can't do this. And what if I'm horrible? What if you're good? Yes, absolutely. Right. Stop thinking absolutely. about it. And and I know your love for art. I've been kind of reading some things for you and your love for art helped guide you into some goals and things that you're working towards mm -hmm. now. I saw somewhere that you wanted to do um, paint parties or yes. maybe gather people around about that. What got you to that and what do you want to do? And for anyone who's listening, 
who may want to attend the paint party. I know you're local in your city or who may say, I want to start a paint party type of thing. How did you get that goal going? Where did, was it at? <laughs> so, um, as I told you, I started drawing, um, during COVID. Um, I've been drawing like my whole life. Cause like I said, when I was younger, I wanted to be a fashion designer and I've always been artistic. Um, my brother has always been the great artist, though, in our family, and I have always been the writer. Now that I've gotten older, I understand that both of us, we have interchangeable <laughs> uh, skill sets. Like, he is a great writer, and I ha I'm an artist. Um, and it wasn't until two good friends, um, they uh, had me enter an art, sh uh, art show in here. Um, that I discovered that I was actually good. <laughs> and the crazy thing is I could have submitted my poetry and had I known that, I would not have stepped out and submitted art. Um, well, I had um, our, our mutual friend. She um, and her family were having um, an, an event or a dinner or something around Thanksgiving. And they were like, yeah, could you do some boards for us? Do you think you can do some art for us? And I was like, yeah. So it ended up turning into, we had two paint parties, which was, we had the small paint party that we were planning and then it turned into a bigger paint party. And then from there, it just kind of just <laughs> went crazy. And so what I've been doing is supplying people um, board so I can ship. Um, I do do that. Uh, but I had been preparing packages and supplying people boards and then shipping. Um, now, as of October 1st, I have my own studio here in Paducah. And uh, hopefully we will be open uh, somewhere around the beginning of November. Um, and I, we will be doing paint parties on a bigger scale. My goal with the paint parties is to supply different types of art. Um, I notice a lot of people that do paint parties, there's um, somewhat of a general theme of the art that's provided. And I wanna provide an abundance. So um, my daughter is an artist, so we tend to use um, her art, my art, and then we have commercially sourced art. So I have so many different options, uh, so much so that you could kind of contact me and say, hey, I think I want to paint an elephant sitting by the water and, <laughs> and I can get that for you or we can create it um, between me and my daughter. So uh, it's one of the things that I actually love to do. I love it because you started and and it wasn't like you started with the studio, right? You started small. So yeah. if someone's listening to that, right, maybe get some of your inner circle and say, hey, girl, hey, you know, uh, can I use your living room? I want to do a paint party. Yeah. I want to just okay. gather three, four, five people and kind of start there. And yes, that's how and we grow. started. <laughs> don't, don't let your fear stop you. If you're yeah. listening to this stuff and now you're going uh, something, maybe trying to uh, encompass the youth and bring them into teaching them mm -hmm. and harnessing yeah. their kind of skills and stuff like that. Right. And you also have, I guess you say things that could possibly stop you as, as a, you wrote in your bio and you would talk about it, but you didn't let some of those ailments and um, pain and things stop you. Can you kind of speak on any of that for whatever mm -hmm. you're comfortable with? Yeah, sure, sure. For um, a long time, I didn't really want to talk about it publicly, but um, I deal with a condition called rheumatoid arthritis. And when you think of that, you just think, oh, you know, your bones hurt. Well, that's part of it, but it, uh, it's an autoimmune disease and it affects you by causing like extreme fatigue. And it really, what happens is your body starts fighting against itself. So um, just about anything can happen. One of the ways that I use writing, I use art, I use my uh, graphic design, it is a coping mechanism to help me to just survive. Um, it, it really helps me to get through the day, um, to have something to look forward to, uh, to motivate me to do better, uh, to keep pushing. There's, there's different levels of it. You know, some people may feel great, may see them running around and just having fun. And then some days you just feel like you can't get out of bed. Um, 
I've been struggling with this since 2015, just came out of the blue. You didn't do anything to get it. It just happens. Um, there's no cure to it. So it's something I'm stuck with. And a lot of people um, I'm learning commit suicide because they can't deal with the pain um, or they are just tired and fatigued so much so that they just don't do anything. And it really is your mindset. Your mindset matters in any single thing that you do or that you're going through. The mindset that you have to be able to get through whatever it is, um, to keep enduring, to start doing something. Uh, just like you said earlier, you're probably going to fail. It's probably going to happen. Now, how you come back from that, that's what's important. And knowing that you don't have to be perfect, um, that you can pick up and you can start again, uh, those things are very important, you know, especially when you're starting anything. Yeah. It, you know, and you said some important things a second ago there where you said at first, you know, you didn't want to kind of speak about it. And we all have to get through whatever we get through. And to tell anyone, if mm -hmm. you're not ready, you're not ready. But I think, and I've talked about this several times on my show, that it is valuable for us to speak out, especially for African-American culture. Mm -hmm. And I say this specifically from a man's point of view, because in our culture, for the most part, we're taught to hide it. We're mm -hmm. taught to not speak on it. But then yeah. there's some young person who's listening to this episode or a past episode or someone else and they're hearing your voice and they're probably saying, wait, that sounds like me. I've got that. Yeah. I didn't know what that could possibly be what you're speaking of. Now we yeah. maybe push them towards going to get checked out or something because we're, we've dealt with so much things of uh, not trusting hospitals and doctors mm -hmm. because of the right. past or whatever. Nope, I'm not going to a doctor to see what's wrong with me. I'm just going to paint it out. And yeah. So I think us opening up and learning to speak about things is one therapeutic for us, and also it helps someone else who could possibly be in that position. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you think if there's anything we've missed? And matter of fact, before we do that, let me bring up because I was able to find it. So for some of the viewers. Um, who are watching let's see if this pulls up one second all right so i was able to find your books and so forth on amazon and so some of the viewers i love the the brightness the colors uh that it just evokes it, what what draws you to this type of imagery on your on your work really really just that like i love colors and just right here i just want to um if you scroll down just a little bit this i mean way? scroll back up i'm sorry okay. <laughs> uh, all the way back up uh okay. to that girl like us I, let me just right. talk about my daughter real quick right. um so me and my daughter we came together and we created this coloring book and it's called a girl like us um it's a coloring book we have journals um it will probably end up being a movement uh she taught herself uh, how to be a digital artist during COVID. That was one of the things that, that she learned. My daughter deals with um, a condition called brachial plexus. Um, it's a birth injury. Uh, some nerves were stretched when she was born. And so she has issues with her hand. Now, she is like a superwoman to me uh, mm -hmm. because she doesn't let anything stop her like she's so amazing it almost brings me to tears i'm trying to tear up now but inside the coloring book is girls that are different and that's really what she wanted to focus on whether it was they were diverse in um the way that they look being a different race uh the lady on the cover she has vitiligo um, the lady with the uh, head covering, she's actually one of my friends, Leah Vernon. She's a, um, a plus size uh, Muslim model. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's where we got that from. And, you know, she wanted to just have diverse women. So there's affirmations in the coloring book and just all different kinds of women. And you can color them any color or however you want. And mm -hmm. it's just such a beautiful thing. I'm so proud of her. She's just 15 years old. Um, but hopefully one day we will be in stores with that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there we go, right? That got to aim big. And I love that Yeah. <laughs> for, 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 for a young lady to mm -hmm. see such a vision and growth of like, this is what I want and not be held back by this is what you can't do. Yes. And 
it's so inspiring because I actually have someone that's coming on um, the podcast in the near future who has that with the skin condition. And mm-hmm. she's going to talk about her struggles and how yeah. she maybe uh, puts makeup on certain days and not. And, uh, but that is so inspiring. And people can find that at Amazon backslash. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, C Rochelle. Uh, yes, I hope that. that's correct. And so, yeah. And it's um, for the listeners. It's C dot R O S H E L L. And it yeah. also will be in the show notes so you can find the links for those as well. But that is absolutely inspiring. And we're going to get ready to wrap it up here. But I, this makes me feel so good because, one, we're bringing notice to an artist. We're bringing notice to someone who and hearing your goals. And when you get to those stores and everything, we're going to be there. My wife and I, we always go pick up a book and support it. And for those listeners, go support. Pick up a book. I promise you, your son, your daughter, their face, they will um, light up. They will yes. make it, they will feel like, oh, thank you, right? That, mm-hmm. I can't tell you the joy I'm seeing from this. So any final words, any parting things you want to tell the listeners, where they can find you, mm-hmm. anything like that? So um, I am revamping my website, CoraCreativeStudio.com. So that'll be uh, revamped within the next couple of weeks to go along with my studio. Um, I would just appreciate the support. Um, I try to make the journals fun, uh, exciting. Uh, I can do commissioned work. uh, So you can contact me at CoraCreativeDesigns at gmail.com for any custom work that you may want. the last thing I want to say is just get out there and try. Just get out there and do it. Just take the leap to start something great because, like, you're, you are your own competition. It's just you. So uh, just keep thriving, and you'll be successful. Yes, thank you so very much. Hold on for me for one moment, Cora. I'm going to do a little okay. housekeeping here to end this show so we can get all this stuff done. I appreciate it. Just hold on for one second. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. This episode has been brought to you by Reflections of You. It's a movement to show women that they can be empowered by just being themselves and being imperfect. Check out Reflections of You. We sincerely appreciate that. And we want to thank you all for tuning in and listening to another episode of Just One Question. Stay tuned because we have some great guests coming up in the future as this is Um, breast cancer awareness a month and we've got a few women coming on to talk about that and we have adhd month so we're going to be talking with some guests with that but as we always say live while you're alive yeah yeah 